All right, so let's talk about the subjunctive. What is the subjunctive? The subjunctive is used for discussing hypotheticals or uh, wishes or suggestions. Things that are not actually factually happening, but things that might happen or could happen or things that we want to happen. Now, unlike the imperative, which has no uh, specific tense associated with it, in the subjunctive we've got what they call a past subjunctive and a present subjunctive. But don't get too hung up on the terminology, because the present subjunctive in English is often used to discuss stuff happening in the future, or stuff happening at an indeterminate point in time. So, uh, don't get too hung up on that. Now, uh, in English, the subjunctive does not have a distinct verb form. What I mean by that is that there's no verb form that is specific to the subjunctive. What we did in English is we ended up reusing verb forms that are already used elsewhere in the language. This is horribly confusing, and at least to sentences that look wrong at first glance, uh, to the point where even a lot of native English speakers get the subjunctive wrong fairly regularly. Uh, let's take a look at some examples. It is vital that he lower his weapon. What's wrong with that sentence? If you look at that subordinate clause, if you were to extract that to a standalone sentence, you would never say, he lower his weapon. That sounds like something a caveman would say. In the indicative mood, uh, you would conjugate lower to lowers. You add that S to it for a third person singular. He lowers his weapon. But in the subjunctive, uh, we do not do that. It is vital that he lower his weapon is actually correct. Uh, this odd verb form in the subjunctive is most noticeable with the verb to be, which is often expressed just as be or were in the subjunctive in English. So it is important that he be on time. It is important that he be on time. Again, as a standalone sentence, you would never say he be on time. You would say he is on time, but that's indicative and this is subjunctive. Uh, this is easy to get wrong. In fact, a lot of English speakers would say it is important that he is on time. They would just say it in the indicative. Another one that is very commonly uh, gotten wrong by English speakers is, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I were sounds wrong in an indicative sentence, but in a subjunctive sentence it's fine. But a lot of English speakers will in fact say, I wouldn't do that if I was you. They'll say that in the indicative because that sounds right. You would never say I were in an indicative sentence, you would always say I was. So the subjunctive can kind of creep up on you and catch you by surprise in English. To the point where the subjunctive forms may in fact fade out of the language altogether over time. Uh, because if enough people speak it the incorrect way enough times, it effectively becomes correct in English because English does not have a centralized standards body to decide what is correct or incorrect English. It's just basically mob rule. So if the majority of people start saying it the wrong way, then over time that becomes the correct way. So uh, if you're watching this from the year 2100, please send me a message via time travel to let me know if my guess is correct because I think the subjunctive, form, the subjunctive forms will eventually fade out of the language altogether. Uh, you'll still hear them in old English expressions. For example, God be with you. You don't say God is with you, although you could say that as an indicative sentence. If you mean it in like a, a wishful sense, I hope that God goes with you, you, you could say in English in the subjunctive, God be with you, or may the force be with you. Or there's some very old uh, pirate style expressions like, be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. In modern English you would say, whether or not he is alive, but in the subjunctive you can say, be he alive or be he dead. That sounds very antiquated uh, in modern English. Now, because the subjunctive deals with hypotheticals, uh, it's very common to introduce the subjunctive in an English sentence with the word if. If I were rich, I would buy that. If I were rich, again, I were does not sound right in an indicative sentence, but it's fine in the subjunctive. If I were rich, I would buy that. A lot of English speakers will say that incorrectly as if I was rich, I would buy that. And I guess that over time is slowly becoming acceptable to the point where those two sentences are probably equivalent in modern English. What a nice little pond. Uh, another way you can trigger the subjunctive mood in English is to use the word lest, but this is extremely old-fashioned and you'll very rarely hear this in modern English. He's leaving early lest he be late. Uh, that's extremely old-fashioned. But notice that we say lest he be late, not lest he is late or lest he will be late. This is subjunctive. Now the last thing to mention about the subjunctive in English is that there's an interesting word order inversion option that we have. Uh, it's a little old-fashioned, but it's still valid English. You can drop the word if and move the verb to the first position in the sentence. So for example, if I were rich, I would buy that. You can also say, were I rich, I would buy that. It means the same thing. It's a little old-fashioned, but it still works. If I had been there, I would have fixed it. You can also say, had I been there, I would have fixed it. Means the same thing, 
It's just a uh, different way of, of phrasing it. And even though that if is dropped from the sentence, it's still implied because we're in the subjunctive and the subjunctive is all about hypotheticals. All right, let's look at German. Let's look at the Konjunktiv 2. I'm going to save Konjunktiv 1 for the end of this video because it's going to break my brain. Uh, let's look at the easier one first. Konjunktiv 2 maps to the English general subjunctive. It's the same purpose in German. It's about discussing hypotheticals, uh, wishes, suggestions, things that are not actually factually happening. And it functions kind of the same in German as it does in English. The verb forms are a little bit more complex as usual because uh, German verbs have more possible endings than English ones, uh, depending on who you're talking to. We don't really care about that in English. Uh, for the so-called weak verbs, the regular verbs in German, we take the uh, simple past tense indicative form of the verb and we just use it as is. This is incredibly confusing, but hang in there because it gets a little bit easier a little bit later. Uh, let's look at the simple form first. For example, uh, du sagtest das is simple indicative past tense. It means you said that. Okay, no problem. Konjunktiv 2 is wenn du das sagtest. If you were to say that. Again, in English we see the word were showing up there. If you were to say that. Wenn du das sagtest. That looks kind of weird. For the so-called strong verbs, the irregular verbs in German, we do an umlaut shift where possible. We add an E to the verb stem and then we add the verb ending. Uh, this gets kind of weird. But for example, uh, common. Past tense is common. I could say ich kam, I came. The, the Konjunktive 2 version of that is ich käme, I would come. The A became an A umlaut and we added an E to the verb stem. We ended up with ich käme, I would come. Uh, this is kind of confusing because that's the same verb form from a different mood, from a different tense uh, that we're reusing here. Same as what we do in English. Uh, it looks wrong, it looks like a typo, but it is correct. Is there an easier way to deal with this? Yes, as it turns out, there is. Uh, we can use würden. What is würden? Well, if we take werden, the past tense is würden, and if we apply the conjunctive zwei rules to that, we end up with würden. We do the umlaut shift. So, you've probably seen sentences along the lines of ich würde es kaufen. Instead of saying wenn ich es kaufte, if I were to buy it, you can say wenn ich es kaufen würde, if I would buy it. This maps a little bit better to uh, what we do in English, and it's a little bit easier to follow. And it's not confusingly using the uh, same past tense. Verb conjugation as indicative. And because when we use a helper verb such as würde to modify the main verb, the main verb is expressed in the full infinitive, so we don't have to worry about the wonky Konjunktiv 2 uh, verb form. We can just use it in the full infinitive, which is very easy to remember. Another example. Wenn ich das essen wollte, kochte ich es selbst. If I wanted to eat that, I would cook it myself. We notice kochte is being used as would cook. That simple past indicative of kochen, to cook, but it's also Konjunktiv 2. But that looks kind of weird if you're coming from English. So another way to say that would be, wenn ich das essen wollte, dann würde ich es selbst kochen. If I wanted to eat that, then I would cook it myself. A little bit easier, in my opinion. But be careful, because this doesn't always work. If the main verb is uh, haben or sein, then we don't do this. For example, if I want to say, I would have it, you might be tempted to say, ich würde es haben. But in my experience, almost nobody says that in German. You would say, ich hätte es. Hätte, of course, is the Konjunktiv 2 form of haben. The past tense of haben is hatten. And if we change hatten to Konjunktiv 2, we do the umlaut shift and we end up with hätten. I would have it, ich hätte es, is far more commonly heard than uh, ich würde es haben. Similarly, if I want to say, I would be there, ich würde da sein seems like it should be an option, but again, from my own experience anyway, almost nobody would ever say that in German. Ich wäre da is much more common. Wäre, of course, is the Konjunktiv 2 form of waren, which is the past tense of sein.
So from Zion we get Waren, from Waren we do the umlaut shift and we get Wären, would be. I would be there, ich wäre da. Is much more common than ich würde da sein. Er wäre der Erste, der ankommen würde. He would be the first who would arrive. Notice we don't say er würde der Erste sein, der ankommen würde, because again, I've never heard anyone in German actually say it that way. Wäre is would be. Now, German also has a past and a present form of this. Uh, the past uses the uh, perfect tense with uh, haben or sein as the auxiliary. Remember from previous videos, uh, unlike English, in German they will sometimes use sein as the auxiliary. So, for example, Ich hätte es gekauft, wenn ich reich wäre. I would have bought it if I were rich. But in German, notice that we say wäre, that's the Konjunktiv 2 form of waren. Ich war reich, I was rich. Ich wäre reich, I would be rich. Another trigger for Konjunktiv 2 in German is als ob, which means as if or as though. You'll also sometimes see it as als wenn. Er spricht als ob er alles wüsste. Wüsste is the Konjunktiv 2 form of wissen, which is to know something. So in English that would be, he speaks as though he knew everything. Now again, in English, a lot of English speakers would say, he speaks as if he knows everything, indicative. Instead of subjunctive, he speaks as if he knew everything. Either one of those is acceptable in English, but in German it's expressed in Konjunktiv 2, er spricht als ob er alles wusste. Now another use of Konjunktiv 2 in both languages is that you can use it to soften a request. For example, there's a difference between saying, I want a coffee, ich will einen Kaffee, and saying, I would like to have a coffee. Ich möchte einen Kaffee haben. Möchte, of course, from uh, mögen, past tense, mochten, uh, Konjunktiv 2 form, möchten. Möchten, would like. I would like a coffee. Ich möchte einen Kaffee haben. And in both languages, saying ich möchte or I would like is a little bit less direct than saying uh, I want. Now, I'll add a cautionary note about proper use of umlauts in German. This is important. Especially if you're new to the language, you can't just glaze over the umlauts. They can sometimes change the meaning of the sentence. For example, ich konnte das lesen. Konnte. Notice the pronunciation, notice the lack of an umlaut in that word. It means I could in the sense of I was able to read. Ich konnte das lesen. I could read that. I was able to read that. If you add an umlaut to that word accidentally, you end up with Ich könnte das lesen, which shifts it entirely. Könnte, of course, is the Konjunktiv 2 form of können, to be able to. I would be able to read that. Ich könnte das lesen. If you add or remove an umlaut accidentally, or if you don't nail the pronunciation in the spoken language, you can end up saying something that is still technically, syntactically and grammatically correct, uh, but doesn't mean what you meant to say. That's the worst kind of mistake, because it's not obvious that you made a mistake, you might have meant to say that. 